it's Thanksgiving this Thursday. We're going to talk about Thanksgiving this morning. Psalms 100 is where we're going, and we're going to show that actions are louder than words. Okay? You know, grandma, anybody ever went to grandma's house for Thanksgiving other than me? Do you know that grandma cooked and sweated and prepared and, you know, pecan pie and turkey and whatever else y'all had? Uh, I don't care if it's bologna. Grandma made it because she was thankful for you. Her actions were speaking. Think about that just for a minute because, you know, as a kid, you think, well, that's just what grandmas do. But no. No, my grandson wants me to be the butler and he be the king. I said, every time I make you oatmeal, I'm your butler and put your shoes on. I already am the butler. See, so anyway, are y'all ready? Amen. Psalms 100, we're going to read the whole chapter. We're going to be here till, till 2 o'clock today. No, it's only five verses. Come on. And so as we look at it, let's dig in. And uh, Psalms 100, 1 through 5, I'm going to say, make a joyful shout unto the Lord, all ye lands. There we go. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We just did that, didn't we? Amen. Verse 3, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. And verse 5, for the Lord... No, it says capital uh, is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Glory be to God. So let's, let's dig in. We're just going to break each verse down. And, and then uh, as we talk about it, I uh, want to share some things, uh, what, what, God, what God wants to do in your life. Amen. So verse 1, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands, or a lot of translations say all the earth. You know, the world's not going to shout to the Lord. The world's not going to declare him. But the earth is, and we are of the earth. Huh? You know, the Bible kind of distinguishes the earth from the world. The world's a world system. But as you look at it, uh, we're supposed to shout. Now, I, I take the Word of God literal. I like to shout. So, I, you know, the Bible says to leap for joy. Anybody other than me ever done that? You need to kind of get that joy going. No, my kids, my kids were arguing, and uh, you know how teenagers are. Get out of there, get up and touch my, hi, hi, hi. You know, they, they were doing all that. And I said, everybody in the living room right now, are you fixing to get it? And so I said, get in a circle right here. Why? Three kids, and they're looking at one another. And I just, when we get out of here, I'm going to go ahead and get finish you off. <laughs> and I said, you know, the Bible says to leap for joy. And they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, we're about to jump because you know what? We need some joy in our house. We're driving out the devil. We're not going to do that. I said, yes, you are. <laughs> and I made them all jump. And the first jump, the smile came. The second jump, the laughter came. The third jump, we had joy. And everybody had forgotten about, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you. You, you know, tore my Barbie up or whatever it was. I don't remember. They were teenagers, but. But literally, if you'll take the word. And so, what about shouting? You need to learn how to shout. Amen. And you need to learn how to shout whatever your favorite biblical word is. I, mine's glory. Glory! You can't do that without smiling. And you have to break some stuff off of you. Does anybody ever have something sit on you that wasn't God and wasn't you? Depression wants to come and sit in your lap? Don't pet it. This is my depression. Look at it. People do. I just feel so bad. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, what's wrong with you is something set on you that doesn't belong to you. And sometimes you got to shout. The most famous shout in the Bible is Joshua, and they're walking around Jericho. Yep. Yep. The walls came down. And the walls came down, and everybody, so they circled the building, and they were all able to walk straight in. Now, yeah, but, you know, we think, oh, you know, a little old brick wall. No, they had chariot races on these walls. People lived in these walls. Man, and the people uh, were looking down at them like, these people are nuts. They've been walking around us for seven days. But then they shouted. There's something to a spiritual shout to break down strongholds, to break down walls. 
So on the count of three, we're going to shout. We're going to use my word, not yours, because I don't know what yours is. <laughs> Your word should be glory this morning, because we want the glory of God to fall in our lives. We want the glory of God to go in and be in the car with us, because, you know, the enemy comes to steal the word. He is what we taught, you know, if you plant, he's going to give you, you, got, you know, the, the kids are going to throw up in the car, and your wife's going to get mad at you because you fed them the donuts. And the thing about it is, it's just the enemy coming to steal your joy. Because, you know, I've been around kids enough, they can throw up and keep on going, and we're the ones that have to clean up the mess. So. And they'll smile about it. Look at that. Anyway, I'm getting off. Are we ready to shout glory this morning? Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, three. Glory. glory. Man, that's pretty good. I, I didn't shout because I wanted to hear. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Glory. glory. Now smile at somebody. Come on. Tell them they look good. Use your faith. <laughs> if you have to. Now, it's easy to do it in church when we're all laughing and having fun, but it's when you're down and out is when you need to learn to shout. It's when you got to take the city and it's walled. When the devil says, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. No, he's a liar. Liar! Get out. Shout at him. Second verse. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. I could camp out here the whole service, but we're not. Serve the Lord with gladness. Here, I'm going to help you all out, okay? There it is. Uh, how is that serving with gladness? You ever met somebody who did that? Mad because they had to help. Mad. But the Bible says to serve the Lord. So, so we've got to change our thinking. Serving shows thankfulness to God. When I serve you, I'm serving Jesus. I'm not serving you. I'm serving Jesus. I do what I do, not for you. I I had to fly to Louisiana this uh, Thursday night. I landed and got in the hotel about midnight and did a visitation. And the guy that, that, who passed away was my boss, and, and he served the Lord with gladness. Uh, he wasn't a preacher. He didn't talk about Jesus all the time. But if, and I remembered the time because people told he bought, if he was military, he was a policeman, he's going to buy your meal. But him and I were in Atlanta. We didn't know anybody, and nobody knew us. And we sit down to eat supper. We're in Atlanta eating supper and look across, and there's this, this black couple. They're probably in their late 80s. They're dressed to the tees, and we find out it's their anniversary. Oh, yeah. Man, we bought their meal. I, cry, I wanted to cry. It was just them. I'm like, where is everybody in your family? Y'all been married 60 years or something. And so, man, but she was so beautiful, and, and you know, th but they were feeble, but they were just, man, they were out on the town. And we got to buy their meal. Nobody knows that. I didn't even remember it until I was talking to his wife and, 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 and ministering and talking about. But it, there was a lady buying food and groceries. He said, let me buy your groceries. She goes, well, this is actually for the church. He goes, that's even better. What can I, let me pay. Goes, Do you need anything else? She goes, I need to go back and get more. He goes, go. She goes, no, I'm just playing. But he would buy food for people. He would do things that nobody knew. But God knows. Because he was serving Jesus by serving people. Let's read this scripture right quick. Uh, in 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11, and, and, and we serve. How, how can you serve like you serve? Well, let's, let's look and let's read it together. The end of all things is near. Oh, how about that? Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Who are you praying for? You're serving them when you're praying for them. Verse 8, above all. Keep fervent in your heart love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. Look what they did. Look. That's not love. That's the enemy. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. You know what? You ever, if you ever go to somebody's house that's hospitable, you want to go back. If somebody's kind to you and feeds you and somebody that takes care of you, it's like, you know, I don't know, you may not have had a very good grandmother, but I had five of them that I knew, and they were hospitable. The oldest one was 99 when she passed away. She was five years old when Custer was killed. She passed away in 1976. I wasn't that old, but I was old enough to know her. And she cooked breakfast for me if I went up there to her house. Her daughter, my great-grandmother, 
would just, they were hospitable. Favorite thing about their, their house is they had knee-high oranges in the bottom of the refrigerator, and when you popped the cap, they turned the slush. <laughs> yeah, and they took a nap every day after lunch, and I'm like, I, I can't do that, but come on, being hospitable. We need to learn that and, and, but without complaining. As each one of us has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of manifold grace of God. Hold on here. A, a special gift. We look at a preacher and we think, wow, they're called to preach. That's not all the gifts there is. Man, if, if, you, if you have a gift, you should be doing it to make money, but you should also be doing it to serve people. What, what you do with your gift. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about, yeah, the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, teacher, but it also talks about this man I have gifted to carve wood or to be a carpenter, or this man to overlay gold. The Ark of the Covenant was overlaid with gold. That man had a talent and ability. God has given each one a talent and ability, and if it's all you got one tooth and you got cookie and bake cookies, you go smile and serve cookies. You'd, go, you'd be inhospitable, and it's a special gift because, you know, some people burn cookies, and they think they're all right. You know, you ever met somebody that grill hamburgers, and they're all just charred, and it don't work? Employ is serving one another as God's stewards of the manifold grace of God. If you have received the grace of God, it's your responsibility to give it. God is the God of restoration, and he uses us to restore people. And he uses us to bring people to the kingdom. We have the ministry of reconciliation. And it's, it's, and it's by, think about the people in your life that have spoken into you, teachers, parents, grandparents, friends, somebody you work for, but they were kind to you. They sh they've shown you the grace of God. Be that person. Well, nobody's ever done that for me. Well, then you do it. I told a kid who's never had a dad, I said, you know how to be a good dad because you know what a bad one's like. But now you know what a good one's like when you have a family. Be a great dad. Be a great dad. Don't wallow in, I never had a dad. I never had this. Go and be what a great dad is supposed to be. This is how it works. And so last verse, verse 11, whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterance of God. That means kindness, love, mercy. Whoever serves to do it as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies. There's the key. It's not me. It's God in me. He empowers me. And the mindset, too, it, well, well, you don't help them because they can't help themselves. We couldn't help ourselves, and Jesus went, on, went to the cross and died for us and made a way for us, serving the strength which God supplies. God gives us the strength so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Isn't that awesome? So we do everything with God's strength. We do everything is unto the Lord. That's why we got to serve. You know, we set up our church for people to serve. But we ought to serve out and, out and about too. Well, if you pay me, I'll serve. No. You start serving and God's going to open doors. You learn how to be a servant. And people will know, hey, hey, I, I, I remember Clayton. Man, he's got a servant's heart. We need to hire him. Happened to me. I hire him right now. Because you have a servant's heart, because you're going to follow, you're going to do what's asked, and you're going to do it with joy. I, I've worked places where they, they, didn't, they didn't like Christians. They tried to cut them down and make them cuss. This one, one boss, he, that was his goal, was to make every Christian in the place cuss. And I just look at him. It ain't going to work here, boy. Matter of fact, I led his wife to Jesus. And it changed his life. Hey. And I hope he got saved. He was from California. He got killed in a drive-by. Golly. But God put me there in that place for that time to reach that family. I thought I was there to make money. 
I need to make a living. Recession had hit. I need to I, I shut my business down and went and went to work for them. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm here. To, you know, I'm going to work. I'm going to make money. I'm going to do this job. But when she received Jesus, I was driving home rejoicing. And the Lord said, that's why I sent you there. And I thought, I thought I was there to make money. No, you're there at your job. You're there to be the grandparent or the parent of your children because of Jesus. He gave you those kids. He gave you that job. And you're to be light and salt. Man, it's real. I, I can't explain. You know, people want to get religious. Hallelujah. Uh, it's not religion. It's the Word of God being activated in your life to change your life, to make you better, to bless you, and to guide you, and to lead you. Amen? So thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. So, so serving and showing thankfulness. We got to serve. No, we don't have to serve. We get to serve. Yes. Amen. I tricked you, didn't I? Uh -huh. I'm trying to set you up. See, amen. So when I'm serving you or when you're serving me, you're not serving me. You're serving Jesus. Yes. Amen. And that's why when you always ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? I told you I could hang out here all day because the Lord tell you don't do it. But a lot of times he's going to tell you to do it when you don't like it. A lot of people want to pull out the discerning card. But I discern there. If you're always discerning negative, that's not discernment. Come on, you got to discern some goodness sometimes. Because not everybody is, is, is going to hell. And if they are, it's your responsibility to turn them around. Amen. Instead of going in a cave, I'm not going to look. Oh, I don't want to be around them people. Jesus said, we're in the world, not of it. We're in here. We're, we're about this place because we are salt and light. Amen? They may not be very hospitable. That's all right. Jesus is still Lord. Verse 3. Know that the Lord is God. He is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves, for we are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Mm-hmm. Sheep stink. Just want to say that. We, listen, it's time to quit putting ourselves first and putting Jesus first. Selfish people put themselves first. Well, what about me? What about me? Lord, I, it's about, no, no. If you're depressed, it's time to break out and go serve somebody. It's time to break out and go do somebody. Know, know that, that the Lord is God and not we ourselves. We're the sheep of his pasture. Psalms 23. Y'all know Psalms 23? Anybody know Psalms 22? No. You need to go read Psalms 22. It's what Jesus did at Calvary. Psalms 23 is what happens to when you become a Christian. 22 is Jesus on the cross. It even says that they gambled for my clothes. Those Roman soldiers didn't know that that's in the Bible. He talks about great bulls of Bashan, demonic spirits all around him, biting him, tormenting him. He took that for us. Somebody said, I just can't believe Jesus went to hell. That was your punishment. That's why he went. That was our punishment. Woo! That cross was our punishment. That beating was our punishment. But it wasn't just the physical part. It was the spiritual part. Psalms 22 talks about the spiritual part of it. And those demons drug him down when he died. But God has set us free through the life of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and the resurrection. Amen? And so it is not about us. Know that the Lord, he is God. And it's he who has made us. He made you. He loves you. You are special. He knew you in your mother's womb. Well, when I'm ugly. No, you're not. That's your thinking. God doesn't think that way. There is nothing that God created that's ugly. And if you think you're ugly, wait till you get to heaven. You're not going to be ugly there either. Come on. It's, 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 we got to work. No, that we have got to start recognizing God first. There is no fear of God anymore in America. No respect for him. Well, it's about me. 
by me. What y'all going to do for me? What would I get if I go there? Why would I go there? Why would I, I, me, but know that he is God? And if God sends you, it doesn't matter. If God said go, it doesn't matter. He's got you. He's got you. And so we got to recognize God first in everything, not your spouse, not your kids, not your grandkids. It's God. If you put your kids first, you're putting a target on them for the devil. Because the devil don't like you, and if he can get to your kids, what's upset you, he's got you. See how it works? He's going after your favorite thing. Well, he can't touch God. God went like this, and Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. Not even a fight. So God is God. Respect him and honor him and be fearful of him. And know that God is God. And we want to get in the place where God's at and what God is doing. And we want to be mindful of what God's doing in these, these last days. And we need to do our part, not just drift along. Yeah, well, I went to church, Lord. You all need to read the book Brother Hagin wrote as a teenager. He went to church, got baptized, but he never accepted Jesus as Lord. He walked an aisle but never prayed the prayer. And at 15, he died. And he's going down not up, and it's getting darker and darker, and he starts yelling, God, I go to church. I was baptized, and he's still going down. God, I go to church. I was baptized. Religion don't do anything for you. Amen. And he got to the gates of hell, and he knew if he went through those gates, he couldn't see it, but he knew he was there. It rattled, and he came back. Come back in his body, his grandma, his mom was on the porch just praying as loud as she could. His grandma was sitting there, come on, baby. And he came back into his body. He did this three times. Like, God, I go to church. On the way back up the third time, he said, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. As he went back into his body, he said, if you read the scribe, it says like his, your foot going into a boot. His spirit went back into his body. You have a spirit. And he finished that prayer with his own mouth. And he told his grandma, I'm not going to die anymore. Not right, you know, today, I'm not going to die. So I went to this funeral this week. And I've heard this kind of type of stories before. People have told me and experienced it, but... Uh, this man had a massive heart attack last week, and y'all know how I, I'm, I'm, I've got to change subjects. You know, sometimes the Spirit of God to come on me, and, and, and I have an ache or God to give me something that's not mine. I'm sitting on the platform in this Baptist church because it's the biggest church there they need. They asked me to speak, and I, I didn't realize it was the Holy Spirit, but my heart started hurting, and I had pain down my left arm, and I'm like, Am I having a heart attack here? What is going on? But it was the Spirit of God on me to pray for people. In the midst of a funeral, yeah, I do altar calls. But, but let me tell you the story. They had brought him back and trying to, they shocked his heart 14 times in a matter of a week. And he told her when he was coherent and able to talk, that hurt so bad. And she finally said, no more. This is more than what he wanted. Y'all hurting him and no more. So they called her uh, the last night and said, look, listen, you told us not to shock him anymore. Nope, don't shock him anymore. Well, I'm telling you, he's probably dying. You need to get up here. It's 2.30 in the morning, 3, 3 o'clock, something like that. She walks in the room. He's not, he's not eyes aren't open. <laughs> she grabs him by the hand and said, baby, I'm here. And a tear trickles down his eye. And she says, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to miss you, but I love you, and I'm going to be okay. And the kids are going to be okay. You can go on and be with Jesus. And just like that, he quit breathing. In that moment, he was holding on for his family. That's the power of your spirit. But she told him, you can go. And that was his last breath when she said, you can go. Now, that's awesome. 
But I'm telling you that you are a spirit man, and you need to learn how to serve God and listen to God and hear your spirit. What God is saying, God wants to guide you and lead you and direct you, and it's real. Because I can give you countless of stories like that. Uh, so so let, let's, let's keep going here and, and, and try to finish this sermon. Know that he is God. Selfish people recognize themselves first, not God. They're the first ones that say, I'm not doing that. You know, God will tell them, you know, we need help in the nursery. God will tell them that. Well, I don't feel called to the nursery. Just saying. Listen to what God's telling you. Be available. You want to change somebody's life? The children's are the easiest to change. Bad or good, but we want to change them for the good. Mm-mm. So recognize and honor God for who he is, and let's be thankful. Can you be thankful about that? Verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving, <laughs> and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Thanksgiving. Let me, let me, uh, let me read Hebrews 13, 15 through 16 says, through him then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise, that is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect to, good, to do good and sharing for such is a sacrifice or such sacrifices God are pleased with. Learn, learn to be thankful, to thank God. Are you thankful? Come on, give me that gratitude, yeah, because some of you aren't, but you just go ahead and nod your head. Work on it. Work on it. Because here's what God likes. He wants a sacrifice of praise. Just like I said, when you don't feel like it, you got to be kind. When you don't feel like it, you're going to be nice to people. When you don't feel like it, you're going to be thankful for, to God. You're going to enter in. Thank you, Lord. Notice, you know, most, most of the times we sing fast songs and then we end with a slow one because we're entering in with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful. The, the lady that I talked to in the family, she was thankful to God. Still thankful with a broken heart, but still thankful. It's tough, hard. It's hard when it hurts, but that's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. When you give God your broken heart, there's no broken hearts in heaven, but when you give him, that's something he don't have. So he can take it and fix it and repair it and make your heart better. Sure, sure. As, as our matriarch, Miss Shirley, says, you can have a moment, but the moment can't have you. You're going to have a broken heart. You're going to have times where you miss people, but you can't let have moments have you because you're going to see them again. The Bible says we're not without hope, and we can be thankful, and we need, to be, we need to be honoring. We need to enter in with thanksgiving, and it ain't all about being giddy and happy and smiley, but it's just being thankful, and, and, but it's being kind. Uh, being, see, it's, it's a God-pleasing sacrifice is what we're talking about. I want to please God. I love you, I like you, but I want to please God. And God, and he, he commands us to be nice to one another. Be ye kind to one another. My uncle's a Baptist pastor, and, he, and then I was going through it, and he's been through it, and he goes, you know what? It's a commandment to be kind to one another. Teach on being kind. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but we're supposed to be kind whether we feel like it or not. Kindness. God has called us to kindness. That is a scripture. I'm just not making this up, okay? Be ye kind to one another. That's King James. You know, it's got a stick if it's King James. Be kind. Where is your kindness? Have you left it somewhere? Did somebody steal your kindness? They didn't steal it. You let them have it. Just like your joy, you can let the enemy have your joy. He can steal your joy. He can steal your kindness and your goodness. Mm, it's time to take it back. Here we are. This is what we're about, a restoration. So be kind. Be nice. Uh, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Verse 5, for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generations. Come on, your kids, your grandkids, even after you're gone, you need to be declared, all my family will serve the Lord. All my family. I don't care what it looks like right now. They may be knuckleheads. They may be whatever. 
but they're going to serve God. They're going to serve God. And so we need to recognize that God's faithful. He's faithful and he's kind. I just talked about us being kind. Why? Because God's kind. That's grace and mercy. But look, God is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth, it's really what we're talking about is worship. Listen to Lamentations 21 through 26. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Remember, I can't say it enough, remember. This I call to my mind is remembering. Remember is a covenant term. This do, when you take that cup and that bread, in remembrance of me. God told Abraham, remember the covenant that we cut. You know, we don't cut covenants anymore. We probably would be better if we did because you don't forget it when you walk through that bloody animal and the guts go between your toes. That's nasty, Pastor Brad. I can't believe you talk like that. That's the covenant. It's, you, watch the, the, you watch what they filmed in the passion of Jesus getting whipped. You can't watch it. It ought to mark you. And him dying on the cross, it's a bloody thing. It's horrible. But that's the sacrifice for our connection to God. That's the sacrifice that Jesus paid the price. And so when we look at this, it said, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. Listen to what it said there. He's our portion. He's our hope. God is good. Not for people who wait, but people who wait on him. If you go to a restaurant and the waiter or the waitress stand over there and you're kind of, I need to order, they're not waiting. There are times God will tell you to sit still, but there are times when you worship and wait on the Lord, that we learn how to wait upon him, learn how to serve him. Let's go over them real quick. If you got a pen and you got notes and you're writing these down, I want to say actions speak louder than words. On the right-hand side of number one, just write shout. It's time to learn how to shout. If you've lost your shout or you never had one, it's time to get one. You need to learn how to shout to God, praise, and you shout at the devil to get out. Number two is serve. Are you serving anywhere? Come on, make it your point every day to serve God somewhere. In some way, let's serve God. Number three, are you putting God first? Is he first and foremost? Is he number one? Is he number one? Do you go to him first? Or do you go to the doctor first? I want to say go to the doctor, but you go to God first. Go to the doctor, but go to God first. Ask him to give you doctor wisdom to help you. Number four, learn how to praise. Praise him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Lord, we praise you. Lord, I just thank you today. You're so good. You're so kind to me. I'm still here. Come on. And the last but not least is worship, which is thankfulness. It's about doing. What are you doing? Well, I, I'm, I'm thankful. Well, what are you doing to show your thankfulness? It's like I said, Grandma is thankful for you is why she cooks. Come on. Learn how to be thankful. Learn how to be a doer to show God your thankfulness. Actions speak louder than words. Well, God knows my heart. The Bible says, be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Amen, Pastor Brett. And then go out and cuss the waitress because they didn't, we weren't quick enough. That's not being thankful. And that, that, that's what I'm pushing. Come on, be thankful. Teach your kids to be thankful. Teach them 
how to be thankful, to give, give them understanding of what it means to be thankful, their actions. Let's bow our heads today. Look at your heart today. Are you thankful for all that God has done for you? If you're in here breathing, you ought to be thankful. If you're saved, you need to be thankful. If God has shown you loving kindness, be thankful. And in return, love on people. But maybe you're in here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You've never accepted him. If that's you, will you lift your hand? You've never accepted and prayed and accepted Jesus. And you want to accept him today, will you just raise your hand with me? Maybe, maybe you're in here today and you, you gave your heart to Jesus a long time ago, but you haven't been thankful. You haven't been living for him. You let the enemy lead you astray. Would you lift your hand? I see your hand. Anybody else? And I'm thankful for that hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. God loves you. God cares for you. Jesus is real. And this is something if you raise your hand, or even if you're sitting here and you haven't raised your hand, there is an assurance that you know that you know that God is real in your spirit. You can know God. You can't talk me out of my salvation. I've seen people talked out of it because it was in their head and not their heart. Let your salvation be real in your heart. So as we pray this, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to pray it. And y'all, if you're saved, just help them pray it. Say this with me. Say, Father, today I believe with all my heart, with all my life, that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died on the cross for my sins, that He rose again, victory over death, that I can live forever with Him and the Father. Today I'm saved because I prayed and I believed. Thank you, Father, for saving me, for sending Jesus just for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Sermon of the Week. For more information about Legacy Church and other resources, visit us online at LegacyFamily.info.